say hello. Uh, so some of my known people once asked that engineering mechanics or building materials, this subject has got weightage of two to three marks in gate examination. Yes, that is true. Then why should we learn this subject for only two to three marks? See, if you understand two to three marks is not a very small marks in case of gate because two marks means two thousand rands. Okay. It means somebody has learned engineering mechanics and he will get two to three marks more than you. If it happens, then he will get a rank two to three thousand higher than you. So this is the huge competition. If you leave this subject, then your rank will be you will be behind by two to uh, two thousand to three uh, three thousand. Okay. So together, this building materials and uh, engineering mechanics can cause a rank of five thousand higher. So you cannot skip any subject in case of gate. That is the problem. Okay. You will have to learn every subject, and you will have to learn every subject carefully. You must be able to do any question. Okay. So that is why don't skip any subject. Engineering mechanics will come for only two to three marks, but it will give you a rank higher as two to three thousand. So that is why it is very important. Okay. So in last video, what we have understood about some uh, basic of engineering mechanics and then some laws, and after that. We have solved one question. Now we are going to see some more questions and then after that some more laws. See the second question. It says I am only dictating the question because if I, if I write this question then or all these questions then it will consume more and more time. So that is why I am only dictating. So this question is two equal concurrent forces are acting on a point having an angle theta between them then what is their resultant is it see question number two two forces two equal the most important thing is to understand that is two equal forces are having an angle of theta between them so uh, then Q it is resultant okay this question theta two equal concurrent forces are acting on a point having an angle theta between them what will be the resultant I think there is some problem with the question No, there is no problem. So we can solve this. See, this is the two forces. This is P, Q, and the forces of concurrent. Concurrent means it is meeting at the same point. So it is meeting at this point. Okay. So what will be the resultant? The condition is P is equal to q okay now we can solve this question easily that r is equal to root over of p square plus q square plus 2 p q cos theta okay now if p is equal to q then this is root over p square plus p square plus 2pq it means 2pp that is 2p square cos theta that is equal to root over of 2p square plus 2p square cos theta that is equal to p square common 2p square common 1 plus cos theta okay. now you need to remember this formula that is 1 plus cos theta 1 plus cos theta is 
2 cos square theta by 2 that is from trigonometry if you have forgotten this formula then uh, nothing no problem actually in engineering mathematics we will see these formulas for now you just remember this one ok so this P we can get it out P root over 2 multiplied by 2 cos square theta by 2 ok so this is going to be your 2 and this 2 out this 2 is here P and then root to bar of cos square theta by 2 that is 2 P cos theta by 2 so this is the answer 2 P cos theta by 2 and this is the resultant resultant is this one having a value of 2p cos theta by 2 so this is the answer I hope you understood let us move to the next question uh, you can skip and uh, you can pause and then write ok so next question The next question is what is the angle between two equal forces when the resultant is equal to one of the forces what is the angle between two equal forces and when the resultant is equal to one of the forces that means This is P, this is Q. Okay, their resultant are this is the angle theta. Okay, when the resultant will be equal to one of the forces, that means first of all we know that for the two equal forces, that means P is equal to Q and another condition is the resultant is also equal to one of the forces say R is equal to P then same thing is happening R is equal to P that means R is equal to P is equal to Q we need to find the theta one equation is enough R square is equal to P square plus Q square plus 2PQ cos theta ok now R is equal to P so P square is equal to P square plus again P square plus PQ same 2P square cos theta ok so this and this got cancelled P square plus 2P square cos theta is equal to 0 p e square 1 plus 2 cos theta is equal to 0 that means 1 plus 2 cos theta is equal to 0 so cos theta is equal to negative 1 by 2 theta is cos inverse 1 by 2 negative so theta is equal to cos inverse 1 by 2 that is 120 degrees so their um, angle between these two forces has got to be 120 degrees so see actually this can be the correct figure then the correct figure is this is E this is Q angle 
120 degree and this is R. Now it is looking like force. But look at the length. The length of P, R, Q, all are same. Okay. We uh, in the beginning of the class, first class, we have seen how to convert a magnitude of force into length. So from the length, we can see these are equal. So this is only possible when theta is 120 degrees. Uh, I can assume that you have uh, noted it down. So we can move on to the next question. The next question is, two forces are acting at an angle of 120 degree. The bigger force is 40 Newton, the smaller force is perpendicular to their resultant. Then what is the smaller force? Okay. So this is the condition given. Two forces are acting at an angle of 120 degree. E, Q, the angle between these two, 120 degree, okay, and their resultant is perpendicular to the smaller force. He has given the magnitude of the force P, the bigger force, bigger force, these forces are not equal in this case, bigger force P is 40 Newton and the uh, resultant is acting at an uh, the resultant is perpendicular to the smaller force let us say q is the smaller force so perpendicular means this This is a 90 degree angle. 90 degree. So this is the perpendicular to the smaller force. Okay. If this is 90 degree angle, then this is 30 degree angle. 30 degree angle. This is R. Now let us do the mistake first. First we are going to do the mistake. R square is equal to P square plus q square plus 2pq cos theta okay. theta is 120 degree r square is equal to 40 square plus q square plus 2p that is 40 into q cos 120 degree now see, there are two unknown and one equation. It means it cannot be solved with this. See, R and Q are two unknowns and there is only one equation. It cannot be solved. So what we need, we need some other formula, maybe another equation or maybe it can be done with one equation only. So what we have, we have got an another equation. Okay, that is tan alpha is equal to q your q sin alpha oh sorry sin theta by p plus q cos theta q sin theta by p plus q cos theta we know the alpha that alpha is the angle between the force p and the resultant that we have seen in the first class that is tan 30 degree is equal to q q 
Next is going to see one more question that is example 5 this question is two forces A and B are acting at an angle of theta their resultant R is making an angle alpha with force A what is the value of cos alpha that means two forces are acting on an angle of theta that is force A and force B this is the force A this is force B ok and these are acting at an angle of theta ok their resultant is some value alpha is lying at an angle of alpha the resultant is making an angle alpha with force a with force a this is making an angle alpha he has asked what is the cos alpha okay so how we can solve it we know if this is theta then this is this small part is b cos theta so this is also same this small part is b cos theta now you will make a mistake i am just removing this one this is b this one is a sorry this one is a and this one is b cos theta then this one is b sin theta okay now we have got a triangle a right angle triangle see this one alpha is the angle and this is height this is base this is hypotenuse this is resultant r okay so base by hypotenuse is the cos alpha see cos alpha is equal to base base is p plus b cos theta e ah sorry 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 no it is okay p plus b cos theta divided by r okay so what is r r is the resultant r can be calculated as r is equal to this is a square plus b square plus 2ab cos theta so this is going to be p plus 
b cos theta divided by a square plus b square plus this is r square sorry, plus 2ab cos theta root over This is A plus B cos theta. This is A plus B cos theta divided by A square plus B square plus 2AB cos theta. So this is the cos alpha. So this is the answer in this question. Next, let us move to the triangular law of forces. triangular law of forces now in parallelogram law what we have seen is over in case of triangular law of forces suppose there is a body like this in this two forces are acting one like this acting at an angle of 90 degree and another is acting like this acting at an angle of say 45 degrees ok so these are acting at this angles then what I have said what I have told you that this is valid only for concurrent force system so this forces line of action of these forces are meeting at a point it is meeting at this point okay so this is valid for triangular law of forces now what we can do is we can replace these forces by our law of transmissibility that is first force i am moving this force from here to here that i can do because the magnitude is not changed say this is f1 this is f2 this is also F1. Okay. Magnitude is same, direction is same, and acting in the line of action of force F1. Okay. In here, F2, I am replacing this force with F2. In here. See, this is the angle of the 45 degrees. Okay. Now, this is the angle of 90 degrees. So, I am drawing this separately, after that what we have got, I am drawing this, what we have got is like this and like this, okay. this is 45 degree, this is 90 degree. Now, triangular law of forces is telling that this two forces can be replaced or their resultant will be the tail of this force F1, F2, the tail of this force and head of this force. Just join these two forces, just join these two points with a single force and say this is resultant. So this will become their resultant of the two forces. This is the triangular law of forces. So I'm writing here triangular law of forces. You can join these two points. Uh, once the tail of F1, the head of 
F2 and then we can get this. But in parallel block process, it was the condition. F1, F2, this one, F1, F2. The tail of these two forces was meeting, but here head of force F1 and tail of force F2 is meeting. So this is the only difference between these two forces. Okay. In the force system. We want to note is there triangular law of forces and parallelogram law of forces are applicable for only two force system and the forces should be coplanar and concurrent that we have seen it should act in x y plane only or y z plane only that is in the same plane okay not in uh, some other plane and these forces should be concurrent it means the line of action of the forces should be meeting at a point so only this uh, only in such cases this is valid so I am uh, cleaning this next is our polygonal law of forces it states polygonal law of forces is if there are n number of forces that means more than two in this case more than two we can do if there are n number of forces acting on a body and they are represented in direction of magnitude by sides of a polygon taken in an order then their resultant is represented in magnitude and direction by the closing side of the polygon say now i'm drawing this is f1 this is f2 this is F3. Okay. Actually, these forces were acting on a body like this. First one is F1, then F2, then F3. I have just replaced the forces and I have drawn a polygon that you can understand. How can we, how to do it? This is not concrete. We are meeting at a point. Okay. So same force. I am. Uh, shifted it to F1 like this and then F2 like that and then F3 like this we can do it because what we can do is our uh, force system is the line of action which is you don't take this part actually uh, it, it may confuse you but actually uh, it is concurrent but we are just drawing this for our own interest we are drawing something else okay and then we are drawing it like this if this happens then this is the closing side of the polygon this is the closing side of the polygon and this can be R. it is the closing side of the polygon is the resultant of all these forces. So these forces were acting on a body and then all the magnitude of all these forces can be replaced by a single force that is R. If it is replaced by a single force R then R will produce the same magnitude of uh, acceleration on that body. So this is the polygonal law of forces. The next one is resolution of forces. I am 
have not written the last name. So this is Pauli Bonal Law of Access. If you can understand by my talking, then you can say, write this. <coughs> After that, resolution of forces. Resolution. What happens if there are so many forces in number of forces? Okay, what to do in that case? Suppose these forces are concurrent, they are meeting at a point, the line of action and meeting at a point. So one of the forces like this, one of the like this, like this, like this, like this. Okay. This is F1, F2, F3, F4, F5, mm. just make a little bit of angle with the horizontal. Mm. Like this, F1, okay. So, this is the horizontal. Now I am taking angle of this process at whatever angle they are acting. Suppose this angle is theta 1 in anti-clockwise direction. I am taking the angles. This is theta 2, theta 3, theta 4, theta you don't do it like this because I am taking all this angle in anti-clockwise direction in the same direction okay otherwise you will, make, you will make a mistake so what is the resultant of this process now we can do it stepwise not directly okay so easy it is first one is summation of horizontal force we are doing horizontal force it means this force will have one component of it in horizontal direction this force will have one component of it in horizontal direction every force will have some component of this force will have a component of it in horizontal direction but in opposite direction okay in opposite direction that is also same thing this force is also causing some uh, magnitude in horizontal direction but in opposite direction of these forces these are in this direction these are in this direction okay so what you can do you can, uh, just can do addition and subtraction but it is also not required because your theta value will directly give you the values see f8 is going to be f1 cos theta 1 plus f2 cos theta 2 see how to get this component i have told you before the horizontal is cos theta the vertical is sin theta so f1 cos theta 1 f2 cos theta 2 plus f3 cos theta 3 plus f4 cos theta 4 plus f5 cos theta 5. Similarly for vertical what you can do a vertical summation is f1 sin theta 1 plus f2 sin theta 2 plus f3 sin theta 3 plus f4 sin theta 4 plus f5 sin theta 5 so these are the summation of horizontal and vertical forces after that you need to get result and suppose this all forces have given you some horizontal and some vertical okay so 
the resultant is going to be root over of summation of f h square plus f b square. Okay. And at what angle the resultant is acting? That is tan theta is going to be summation of f vertical by summation of f horizontal. You need to get the value of theta. Okay. So there is some cases where you will have to add 90 degree, where you will have to add 180 degree. Yes, these things we also see. How? Let us see. With uh, some question, we will see how to get the value of theta. Because this part is easy. After that, you may make a mistake while calculating this theta. See, this is understood. So after that, suppose, Suppose you are getting a value of f h positive. Summation of f h is positive. Summation of a b is positive. Summation of a b is positive. Okay. You can get r easily. Result you can get easily. But after that, what happens? If this is positive, this is positive. Then what it is telling that? If H is like this, if T is like this, then you can directly say that our resultant will be in the first quadrant, this quadrant. So our resultant will be in here. What is the angle tan theta with the uh, horizontal? Because all in the uh, last figure, what we have taken, we have taken every angle with the horizontal. Okay. So resultant is also going to be with the horizontal in the anti-clockwise direction. So our resultant is having an angle is going to be in this manner. In anti-clockwise direction with the horizontal. So this is FH, this is FV. In this case, whatever theta you have got, you can write say how this r is equal to fh square plus fb square you can understand easily just fb is in here just put it in here fb okay now r square is equal to fh square plus fb square r is equal to root over of fh plus fb okay this fb and fb has same magnitude and direction uh, just for understanding purpose, I am writing it like this. It is making a triangle. In the next case, suppose if H is positive but if B is negative, then what happens? If A summation of F H is positive but summation of F B is negative, then if H is like this, but if B is like this, then this is the angle, you will be getting this angle, okay? And this angle will be totally your, uh, this angle. If you just put this AP in here, then you will get some angle, but it will be with your um, this angle is that, not this angle. You will get this angle, okay? In that case, you will have to get the angle with respect to horizontal in the anti-clockwise direction. That means your actual angle is this. But what you have got is this. Then you need to calculate this angle is a 360 degree minus this angle. So this is how you can calculate this angle. So this is if this is theta, if this is 360 degree minus theta. Okay. So this is the second case. In the third case, if you get 
F H as negative, F G as positive. If you get F H negative in this direction, F B positive in this direction, you can understand from the figure one force is acting like this, another force is acting like this, the resultant will be like this. Okay. So the resultant has got to be like this only. Here yeah. whatever uh, theta you will be getting in this case the theta will be this angle. So in this case you are going to do this 180 degree plus theta. Okay. So that is the next case. If F H is negative and F B is positive. So this is how you can get all the theta part. Uh, we will be solving some question. There we will see how our thetas are coming. So for now let us solve one question. So this is our first question in resolution of forces. Suppose there are question is uh, 20 Newton, 30 Newton, 40 Newton, 50 Newton and 60 Newton forces are acting at an angle of 0 degree, 30 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree and 120 degree with the horizontal in anti-clockwise direction. What is the magnitude and direction of the resultant force? Now, 20 Newton then 30 Newton then 40 Newton Fifty Newton, and sixty Newton, are acting at an angle of first one. This is the horizontal. First, acting at an angle of twenty Newton is at zero degree. This is in horizontal direction. Then the 30 Newton is at an angle of 30 degree with the horizontal. This is 30 degree with the horizontal. This is acting at an angle of 40 Newton is acting at 60 degree. At 60 degree with the horizontal. Then 50 Newton is acting at an angle of 90 degree with the horizontal. Then 60 Newton is acting at an angle of 120 degree with the horizontal okay so what is the resultant of the forces and at what angle the resultant is acting see first one is summation of forces in the horizontal direction is 20 cos 0 plus 0 degree plus 30 cos 30 degree plus 40 cos 60, 60 degree 
plus 50 cos 90 degree plus 60 cos 120 degree. What is the summation of all this? See, first of all, we can understand that the horizontal component of the force will be in this direction only because these are so many forces and this all the forces will be manipulating this one okay so that is why summation of forces is going to be in this horizontal forces is going to be in this direction not in this direction okay because summation of all the forces has got to be more than the component of this force in this direction so what i have found is this one is one equation 20 cos 0 cos 0 is 1 that means the total force is acting in the horizontal direction 30 cos 30 degree so i have found this value as your 25.98 25.98 plus 40 cos 60 degree i have found this value as 20 uh, cos 60 is half then 50 cos 90 cos 90 is 0 cos 90 is 0 that is 0 50 into 0 is 0 cos 120 we have seen that is minus half that is so minus 30 minus half multiplied by 60 that is minus 30 so this is going to be 20 plus 20 40 minus 30 10 10 plus 25.98 that is 30 5.98 Newton. Next is summation of vertical forces. First force is acting 20 sine 0 degree plus 30 sine 0 degree. Uh, sorry, 30 sine 30 degree plus 40 sin 60 degree plus 50 sin 90 degree plus 60 sin 120 degree so summation of all these forces sin 0, 20 sin 0, sin 0 is 0, that is 0, plus sin 30 is half, that is 15, sin 30 is 1 by 2, that is 30 into 1 by 2 is 15, sin 60 is root over 3 by 2, that is sin 60 is going to be your, I have got this value as 34.64, after that, 50 sin 90, sin 90 is 1, 50 into 1 is 50, plus sin 120 into 60, I have got this value as 51.9165, 51 51.9615, sorry, 51.9615. So together I have got this value as 151.60 Newton. Okay. Now this is all understood. Okay. So one of the forces, horizontal forces, is having positive value. Positive value means in this direction. In this direction. 35.98 Newton. Okay, the vertical component is having 151.96. That is also positive direction. So this is the value 151.60 Newton. Okay, and so their resultant of these two forces must be in the first column. See, 
these forces, you can transfer these forces like this and this this is the force 1, 5, 1, 5, 6 this force like 3, 5, 1, 9, 8 together these forces are acting like this so their resultant has got to go like that so their resultant has got to go like that so this is the first quadrant so with the horizontal you can find the angle theta now what to do the next step is our resultant the resultant is going to be root over of f v square plus f h s square if v is uh, 151.6 h 35.98 I have got this value as one fifty five point eight one newton. So this is got to be one fifty five point eight one newton. Okay. At what angle it is acting? That is tan theta is equal to your summation of vertical by summation of horizontal forces. So this theta is going to be your tan inverse. You may get the same result 4.213. 4.213. So theta is 76.648 degrees. So this theta is 76.648 degrees, so this is the angle, 76.648 degrees. So this is the angle, and you don't need to add or subtract anything like uh, adding 90 degree or subtracting 180 degree, you don't need to do this, because this is in the first quadrant. If it was in the second quadrant, then we had to do something more. We will see later on how to do it. Okay. So this much is for this class. In the next class we will discuss Lamis theorem. Thank you.